muted. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar on the 2018 Biomedical HIV Prevention Summit Scholarship Process. I'm Daniel Do, Communication Strategist and Mac, and I wanted to offer some housekeeping notes about today's webinar. Please note there will be a little bit of lag time between slides. Nothing to be alarmed by. The process of getting it all worked out. We ask that you use the phone line to dial into the webinar rather than rely on computer audio. Audio instructions can be found on the right hand side of your screen under audio with the dial and access code in. For maximum efficiency and limit distraction that everyone's audio has been muted by the presenter. On the right hand side of your screen, you will see a box chat box feature where you are able to ask a question and address it to the person or audience that you would like to have it directed to. Once you have completed asking your question, send it, you can hit send where it will go to the correct person in question. At the end of the webinar, there will be an opportunity to have your questions answered by our team. Questions will be answered in the order in which you receive, and if you feel behind, you can raise your hand so you can have the question unmuted and answered by the uh, presenters in real time. If you have any questions that aren't answered today, you can in conferences at nmac.org. With that being said, I'm excited to pass the baton to NMAC Director of Conferences, Tara Barnes Darby, and NMAC's Registered Med Coordinator, Shantae Gray, who will speak more in depth about the summit and the scholar process. Take it away. Thanks, Daniel. And thank you for joining us this webinar. Like I said, my name is Tara Barnes Darby, and I'm the Director of Conferences here at NMAC. And I'm joined by Shantae Gray, our conference registrar. Hello, everyone. Shantae handles registration fellowship for NMAC's conference. So she is very popular. <laughs> Today's webinar is going to be relatively brief. We'll start with an overview of the summit, and then Shantae will go over the details of the application form. Okay? All right. This year's summit will take place December 3rd through the 4th at the JW Marriott Hotel in Los Angeles. It's a great loca location in downtown LA, located in the entertainment complex as Maple Center. There are plenty of affordable places to eat, and it's easy to get to, so we're glad that we were able to share the location, and I think that we'll enjoy the All right. The summit focus. So in what UFDA that has a broad focus on a number of topics, the summit has a singular focus in it and to ultimately end the epidemic, as well as to increase in of these the summit advancing these strategies. This there will be a focus and address gaps in heavily impacted communities when it comes to biomedical questions. In terms of skills building, we'll have a number of workshops held in the following topic areas. Gay and bisexual men, immigration, research, sex work, trans men, Trans women, women, youth, evaluation, and other considerations. So, USCA, which is four days, space over two days. So, there will be a lot of those days. It consists of curated work. As well as table to exhibit. And breakfast and lunch are going to be served on both days of time. 
Hello, I'm attending the summit. If you're a navigator, or you're from the CB or a health department that either have or work established program, the summit is we're also inviting people to register or apply for a scholarship if they're from the south, from a rural area, the host state of California, and other regions serving people of color. So that was just a brief overview of what we're planning for this year. And now that we've had one, I'm going to pass it on to Shante, this year's scholarship. Okay. There are categories. Our scholarship. We're having just a little bit of lag the time. I apologize. It should be fixed momentarily. So we have two different The first one is option option which is transferable complimentary car registration and a $285 value. Then we have option B which is a non transplementary conference registration. Two nights in LA and coach run ticket to Los Angeles. Please note that the recipient must be at least 50 miles outside Los Angeles and be eligible for a travel scholarship. The selection process and criteria. Each applicant for the summit will be rated based on the application, financial, geographical distribution, and that's rural areas in California, population served, communities of color, women, and trans community. To apply, how to apply for a summer scholarship? You can. Go to the W. This um, site will take you to our scholarship form where you can fill out all the information. Please note that the deadline is August the 10th, Friday, August the 10th at 5 o'clock p.m. East Standard Time. Tips for success. One, you must fill out the application. You see on the application, there's a lot of asterisk marks that is mandatory. Make sure that you take your time and fill it out and make sure that um, all the information is in before you submit it, before you submit your application. Two, focus more on the open-ended questions, questions five through nine. Um, they're open-ended. They're, they want to know about your community. They want to know about you. They want to know about uh, what you plan to learn from coming to the summit. These questions are very helpful for our reviewers. So make sure you spend a little bit more time on questions five through nine. Um, also, make sure you submit your application by August the 10th. Um, 5 p.m. So now we'll go over an example of tips of success. So you see um, on these next slides, these are questions that are um, that are should and shouldn't be answered. So you'll see, you could briefly um, read over this as I go over it. You'll see and, um, the first answer that needs more development. It just say, it doesn't give enough information for the scholarship review. Looking at these, the scholarship reviewers are looking at these scholarships. They're looking for detailed information. They want to know what's going on with you, what's going on with your community. Um, and one one sentence doesn't really answer it. But you can see in the next one, uh, which I a better answer, when someone went out and said everything that's going on in their community, what they'd like to change, and what they learn from coming to the summit. So these are the types of things that we're looking for. Uh, when you fill an application.
and it will just go guys short. The tips for success. And as you can see on this tips for success, it's a personal statement. Um, as you can see at the beginning, the person answered in one sentence, uh, which is not enough information uh, for our scholarship resource. It's nice that they're able to answer that. So in to detail about uh, what do you um what you would like to learn, how you're going to bring it back to your community, all things that the scholarship review is going to look at and be so excited to know that you're coming to this conference and going to take back so much information into your community. So make sure, um, like I said, that you focus a lot on five through nine. So now I want to go over scholarship notifications. Notifications will be sent out via email to all applicants on the week of September 24th, 2016. Everyone who submitted a from received or did not receive it. So now we're going to open it up to questions. This is Chick Lewis, Communications Director, and, and one question so far from Alexa about um, how about gender non-binary or gender non-conforming populations. Yes, they will be addressed in the program. Um, and, you know, this isn't a program committee call, just giving a general overall focus. So this is just the focus for this year sessions in the population as well. Do we have any more questions? Um, do, you recommend, do you recommend that youth apply to be involved in prep programs who are not prep leaders per se, but are prep youth leaders who assist with outreach and support programming around prep? Definitely. Um, you know, the list that we gave is not, you know, then all and be um, it's not totally inclusive. I think some, uh, ideas for people who uh, we're definitely targeting. But yes, we're looking for youth as well. Another question, do you have to work at an agency or can advocates attend and apply? Advocates can attend and apply. You do not have to work at an agency. And if that uh, question doesn't apply to you, you can just put not applicable uh, in that box and you won't be penalized. Um, Slides being available later. This webinar hosted on our YouTube channel, the uh, Biomedical Summit website this week. Uh, for this scholarship, will non traditional students be considered? Hmm. Can you clarify? Yes. Um, let's see. Uh, while we're waiting to have a clarification on that. Okay. Um, a uh, question about uh, high-risk heterosexuals, if there's any programming for high-risk heterosexual community. Well, the program is still being developed. We should be posting that on our website, I believe, after day, today's um, um, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll know exactly all the steps that are going to be offered for the summit. Check our website at the end of August. Okay. Um, it's actually in progress right now. So the non-traditional student, the person, the person who asked that question is the application. When the application is available, the application. Yes, it is. Okay. Fill out your application. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of questions. How many scholarships will be awarded? We are planning to award over 100 scholarships. Um, but generally, we normally get, you know, conferences, hundreds of applications. So uh, we want to award as many as possible. Um, but definitely keep in mind that it's a competitive process, basically, due to the volume that we receive. Uh, you can not provide direct service can I my work is more about capacity building ecosystems. 
Yeah, definitely apply. I think that there are probably some instances where there, um, you know, skills that can be. Um, question about the application form: Is there a character limit for questions? It's not. There's no limit. Um, we had a question. I'm going to back to. Uh, I want to get to. I had a question about regards to urban areas that are hard hit by violence and crime violence and how PrEP can be helpful there. Um, this question about, uh, about uh, focus on urban areas with a lot of drugs and a lot of drug, drug violence and crime and how PrEP can be helpful in those communities? Yes, so there are going to be some programs in that. Um, is there a limit to the number of persons from each ASO applying? We try to award one per um, applying agency. Um, okay. uh, so it's, uh, somebody didn't see all the slides. Is this full scholarship or airfare hotel included? Those are that option A and option B. That'll be which is which is your round trip um, flight, your hotel, and your registration. Um, do you consider applications by agent navigators who work with high risk populations? Prep navigator, women, primarily Latino workers. Yes, I would say you know we're accepting uh, you know scholarship applications for everyone, but, but I say that in your narrative, definitely uh, adjust your desire to um, learn more about um, you know by. And medical interventions in general. In Europe, there was. I think we have a couple up in the in the attendees room. I think Daniel's going to see if they have questions. Awesome. Okay, I see Barry Sermon has a question. Barry, you are unmuted, so feel free to ask your question to the panel. You may mute yourself, but you're unmuted on our end. Yeah. All right. Gary, um, if you want to submit your question on the chat function, we can get to that. We have a couple of other questions coming in. Um, if an applicant has been awarded a scholarship for another MAC event, such as USDA, would they be marked down on a scholarship application for the summer? Down? No. You mean, are you saying would you be ineligible or? Or if they get maybe a lower score because they've gotten a scholarship to another event? No, you would have to apply for each event that you'd like to have a scholarship to. Um, we don't forward the application. Oh, no, but I would say, they're, I was thinking if, they, if they've applied for a scholarship for USDA, would they get a lower score if they applied for a scholarship? No, I wouldn't say a lower score, but we we do want to have a diverse pool. So, you know, we we don't want to continually give the same people um, scholarships. So, I would say that it wouldn't count against you. We are looking for, um, you know, more applications. Okay. Um, once an application is submitted, it would be possible to edit it. So, there's no way to edit the um, scholarship once it's submitted. Uh, but you always can go back in and submit another scholarship. Um, what is the registration fee if you're not selected for a scholarship? Um, the registration fee is $285. Uh, let's see. Are there discounts available if oh, let's see. Are the discounts available if only awarded the option A scholarship? I that means for like hotel and travel, if there's any discounts for that. And are there discounts for students? who are not selected for scholarship. Um, so there's no discounts for the hotel. Um, and we already have a, a group rate. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we already right now have a group rate. Um, as Tara said, we had a wonderful hotel, so the rate is very low right now. And what's that? Uh, student discount if they don't get a scholarship? No, we don't. So, so we don't have a student um, rate at either. Okay. Um, you've gotten a scholarship in the past, can you get one again? It's possible. 
<laughs> it's possible. Um, I have a question here. I work in an HCA in Minnesota that serves underserved populations. We have prep navigators that refer outside. Um, is it apply for a scholarship? Yes. Yes, the scholarship is open to anyone who want to apply. Any further questions in the chat? Um, nobody has their hand raised. So, um, yeah, any further questions in the chat? No. Um, someone who's not directly connected to an agency can they still apply? Yes, thank you. Can someone apply if they did not attend the webinar? Yes, yes. you can still apply if you didn't. <laughs> Webinar is helpful, but you can Yeah, this wasn't apply. A, a prerequisite to apply. Uh, I'm an outreach worker and peer navigator. I work in a high population that has a highly high crime area. I work with PrEP in which problem with 50 and over do not feel, people, problem with 15 over do not feel PrEP is needed. Will there be a program for that and how serious people should be on PrEP? Yes, I assume that, I, I don't want to assume, but I believe that they, we're also going to have some sessions on um, aging population, 50 and over. Any further questions? Going once, going twice. And sold. Daniel? On this today, it was great to hear from you. Oh, and we have one more question. Will there be sessions on solutions of intervention? I know. Uh, it's still working on your faith based um, component to the program. Awesome. Well, thank you again for joining us today. Any further questions, feel free to email them to this at and we look forward to hearing from you and getting your scholarship application. Have a great day, everybody.